Hey watercolor wizards, Hajra here. Today we'll be discussing various palettes you can use for painting and I'll be showing you all the palettes that I use myself. By the way, video scripts, project sketches, art blogs, and deconstructed painting posts and more rewards are available for my patrons on Patreon. All the palettes I have emphasize a few things and one of them is that I like them to be porcelain or tin so that they are easily cleaned and durable. I love how porcelain cleans up really nice. It doesn't have any staining in it and when it sits on your table, it is sturdy. It doesn't scoot around as much as a lighter palette. Also, I like my palette to be compact because I want to limit how much desk space they take up because I do film videos and I can't have a gigantic palette that's taking up a huge amount of space. I like my palettes to be circular in shape or compatible to having paint mixed on them in a circular shape. So all of my limited colors, I usually try to mix them around the wheel. It doesn't matter if I'm using two colors, three colors or more, I like to mix my colors in a wheel. So if that's something where you find that to be visually intuitive to you or useful, then maybe you wanna mix your colors in a circle too. And naturally that would mean that you would get circular palettes like I do. So let's first discuss the different porcelain palettes I have. These are great for viewing your paint because it has a white surface. When you mix your paint on a white palette, it's really useful because you can see the paint as it would look like on a paper mostly. Plastic palettes also come in white for that same reason. The other great thing about porcelain is because it's not a porous surface, it's very easy to clean, very easy to mix on. It doesn't beat up paint. It's very mix friendly more than plastic is. A porcelain palette will not stain or erode over time. It can break and it's not very travel friendly for that reason, but it is sturdy when it sits on your table, like a paperweight sitting on your table when you're mixing paints, and I find that useful. I haven't broken any palettes yet. They're actually easier to keep than some people assume if they feel like they break things. As long as you're only taking it from your desk to your art cabinet, it should be pretty okay. I don't even take mine to the sink. I just get a wet paper towel and wipe them here so I don't have to take them to a sink and increase the chances of them breaking. They can be expensive, and you can also just use an unused dinner plate. It's porcelain if it's circular or if it's flat. You can buy egg plates that already have sections in them. The largest palette I currently have is this one and you can see that even though it's not a circle you can actually still mix the colors in a circular shape around it say okay yellow is going to be at the top purple is going to be at the bottom red and blue are going to be here you can have all your primaries and secondaries on the outside of the circle and you, can, and you can put your neutrals on the inside you don't have to guess where all your colors are once you get used to the color wheel shape and there's enough wells on here that I could actually do another circle on this side I also like this well at the top I've had that lump of gouache on there forever for like a few years. I wet it and touch it up and use it from there if I want to. So this is a very useful and heavily used palette for me. I have another palette like that in a smaller size. It's a very nice palette to have for a smaller painting or if you wanna have it taking up less desk space or even to go traveling with. It does come with its own cover so that you can cover up your paint at your table if you don't want like hair or lint falling onto it or for travel. But I actually just like to use this as a separate mixing tray for separate pieces. I don't actually go and use the same palette for the next painting unless I'm using the same colors. If I'm using different colors in a limited color scheme, then I can just have another one of my palettes out. I do have several palettes and I find that I do use several palettes because I can have one out for one painting and another one out for another painting. And this one is nice because it's a flat platter shape and I can use it again to mix colors in a wheel or in a string if I want them to go straight across and it's very nice for that. You can buy a larger one like this of this size actually. It's definitely something you can use if you don't want to have something with wells. I also have a circular palette. I actually used to have another circular palette and it was larger than this one. It was I think about eight inches across. Now it's in my car's trunk with my art teaching supplies. This one is smaller and I like it because it takes up less space on my desk when I'm filming. And again, it's in a wheel so I can say I wanted to have my yellow here, purple here, red and green, blue and orange. And so I have enough for just the primary and the secondaries. If I want to have any neutrals at all, including like tertiary colors, I either have to do them on the border or near the border or do them in the center. So this is nice if you have not too many colors. If you do wanna mix tertiary colors, you're gonna need another three wells for the tertiary colors. I also have this smaller one of the circular one that I acquired recently and I find it to be super adorable. I have not used it yet. That size is totally okay with me because actually the wells on this one are smaller than the wells on this one. And if you wanted something that is like this shape but smaller for travel or for less desk space, then that's a perfect option. I actually had another palette which is a large as my entire drawing board that I gave away because it definitely took up too much space for me on my drawing table, but even that wasn't as expensive as this little teeny palette. It wasn't for me, but if you like to paint large and have no qualms about table space for filming and other stuff, and you wanna have as many colors out as possible at the same time, then you can go ahead and go for that. I also saw a cool twirly Lazy Susan type tiered palette that holds a ton of color pans someplace, and if I wanted all my colors out at once, then I would get that one as it looks really fun. But anyway, moving on. This one was really expensive because it's actually a three 
3D printed porcelain palettes. They 3D printed the raw ceramic and then I think they glazed and fired it separately. Really liked how it had a lot of sections in a wheel format and I really liked how it had a lot of wells. I didn't know it was gonna be this small. The wells are smaller than any of the wells I have, but we'll see. I'll have to do a separate video reviewing this palette at some point. And remember I said you can get dinner plates and use them as palettes too. Well, I saw this at a art museum and it's only for a few bucks. It's like a little palette decoration and it's a little cup holder with this glazed and painted onto it so that doesn't come off, it's sealed. But what I really like is I can actually put drops of ink on here and use it or I can turn it over and get my paint onto this side. It's cute, it's artistic and it's small but you can use any other small flat plate or platter for this. You can also have tin palettes. You can buy a small mince tin and turn that into a palette by putting your colors on one side and having a mixing tray on the other side. It's easily cleaned. It's good for travel. It's very durable and it won't crack like a ceramic or porcelain palette will if you drop it. It's very lightweight. It's not a white surface though for your paint mixing. I found that I can just use the tin surface just fine, but if that bothers you, you can paint down some white enamel paint onto that. The finer watercolors always come in tin, so you'll get those automatically. You can also buy smaller travel tins that come with paints in them already. Here's my Sennelier Aqua Mini. In this case, the colors come in it. And there's not much of a mixing space on this side, but I sort of like use it anyway. This one's already painted white with enamel, so it's actually a nice tin to have because it comes in white and your colors will show up on it better. And once these paints are gone, I'm actually gonna pull this out of here and then I'll have an enamel white tin to use for travel and tray mixing underneath that. And again, I've mentioned for travel that you can also use plastic palettes you can also use them at home too, but I only have the one. It's because it was sent to me as a product review. This is the portable painter and I do like how there's a lot of wells and a lot of mixing space. And again, it's durable and won't break and it's very light for traveling, but it will stain and erode over time. It's not a natural surface. And if you use rubbing alcohol to remove any ink, if you put ink on here, it'll decrease the lifespan further. I wanna mention plastic palettes as an option because I think they're the most readily used by schools and at home and for travel travel because they don't break. So even if it's not my thing, it might be yours. I should also mention that this drawing board that I have, I got it specifically because it has a melanine drawing board center. And that means I can actually do a lot of really wet work on it for wet watercolor taping down or for mixing my paint or ink on the side. And it's very useful for that. Bottle ink and mix it right up on the side and it wipes clean pretty easy. Just a nice quick side available surface. And along the lines of melanine, there's also acrylic or plexiglass. So if you're mixing something, want to see what it would look like on your paper. If you have an acrylic or plexiglass clear surface, you can just put your paint mix right down on top of your paper and see what it'll look like there, which is a, a useful thing if you want it. And it is a bit more durable than conventional plastic because it is harder and smoother than conventional plastic. You can also use a larger plexiglass piece to tape down your watercolor pieces as a drawing board. And it is more durable than using a wood drawing board if you're getting your paper really wet. You can also use cut glass, which will last longer than plexiglass. And it can be scraped clean of ink or acrylic with a flat blade. Okay, then there's the category of quick instant palettes and I've already mentioned dinner plates, but you can also use wax paper. It has a water repellent surface to it, so it's not gonna last very long, but if you have nothing else on hand, you can use wax paper and it's better than aluminum foil because you're gonna be able to see your colors better on it. You can also use plastic sheeting, can use for a quick instant palette. I like to do that when I'm using acrylic for painting furniture or for painting fabric because I don't wanna get out my porcelain palettes for that. In the same sort of category, is sticky back frisket film or clear film shelf liner. But you can see when I'm peeling it off that there's actually a plastic layer, like a clear plastic sticker, and it's just clear frisket film. And I've put it down on the two inner pages of this color sheets book. So if I want a mixing area, I can have one because there isn't one. You can put that on the inside of a sketchbook cover or extra page too, and it'll serve the same purpose. You can also just use small porcelain or glass bowls and cups for a single watercolor gouache or ink color. And you can use empty pans for smaller detailing amounts of a single color. Little cups that I found on Amazon for like, I think nail polish stuff. And this came with calligraphy set a long time ago. You can also buy nesting porcelain palette cups if you like this type of palette. Another idea for just having a single color cup out if you're just doing a painting with one color or if you need a really large batch of one color. Okay, so that covers all the palettes I have and I hope you learned something about palette types and what you might prefer for yourself. The most important thing about palettes, whichever ones you choose, is that you put some paint in them and use them. A clean palette is no fun. Thanks for parking your brushes here. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Check out my website links and Patreon page to support this art channel below. If you are already my Patreon, 
Patron, thanks for being an excellent bird. If you're interested in buying my originals or prints, please email me or visit my website for info. And until next time, wishing you all epic art adventures.